Hello everyone, it's Kevin from Edureka and welcome to this video on how to become DevOps engineer. If you're wondering what DevOps is, here's a brief introduction. In simple terms, DevOps is the idea of automating the software development process. Developing software is a complex process and requires a lot of expertise. Hence, a lot of different teams. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Hold that thought. There are more interesting things to follow. Let's have a look at the agenda. First, we will start by talking about why should you become a DevOps engineer? What's in it for you? Why should you invest your time? Next, once you're convinced that DevOps has a lot of potential for your career, we will look at the demand for DevOps. Why are companies trying so hard to implement DevOps? Then, we will look at what DevOps engineers do in an organization. How do they help organizations achieve their goals? Followed by roles and responsibilities. Once we are done with that, we'll look at skills required by going through a few job descriptions. Finally, we'll talk about how to become a DevOps engineer and build a roadmap that you can follow. We will close things off with a few useful resources to help you get started. If you like our video, do not forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss an update from Edureka YouTube channel. Also, if you're looking for an online training certification in DevOps, Check out the link given in the description below. Let's see if becoming a DevOps engineer is worth your time. DevOps job market has been flourishing and it will continue to flourish for the foreseeable future. We will discuss the reasons for that later. But for now, let's take a look at how much do DevOps engineers make on an average when they start out. The figures that you see on your screen are just the base average salaries in the US and India. In addition to the base salaries, there could be several other incentives and benefits depending on the employer. Not that bad, right? If you like what you see, then let's check out the job vacancies currently. So here are the numbers of job vacancies as per Indeed. Do keep in mind that jobs are posted on a daily basis and on an average, the job postings are active for 30 days. Plenty of jobs, right? And the job market for DevOps is growing as companies are needing more and more DevOps engineers. So these numbers are likely to continue rising. Excellent. So there are plenty of jobs and the pay isn't too shabby. Now that you're convinced, let's see the reason why there is such a great demand. There are many reasons why organizations are adopting DevOps, but for now, let's just focus on the main ones. Reason number one, faster delivery times. If an organization is slow in rolling out updates, then its customers may get frustrated and flock to their competitors who might offer better features. This could be detrimental for such an organization and possibly put it out of business. That's the number one reason why organizations are making a move to DevOps. DevOps helps speed all of the processes in the software development cycle, leading to faster delivery times. Reason number two, continuous integration and deployment. DevOps uses CI CD tools and automation to build a pipeline in which the code that is made by developers is continuously integrated and built into packages which are automatically tested and then continuously deployed into the world, making the whole process seamless. This takes a huge burden off the developer's shoulders so they could focus on making good code. No wonder companies are crazy for DevOps. Reason number three, higher collaboration between teams. The word DevOps itself stands for collaboration. It's a combination of the words development and operations. DevOps uses special collaboration tools like Slack, which helps the team and individuals connect with one another and collaborate on projects together. This avoids redundancy and miscommunication, and it also reduces operational overhead. Reason number four, innovative mindset. DevOps reduces burdens on teams by automating repetitive tasks. This leads to reduced stress. Moreover, collaborating and sharing ideas leads to an innovative mindset. This is a huge advantage for organizations because such a culture is difficult to inculcate. Number five, early error detection and correction. This saves a lot of time and pain for organizations. Typically, organizations would invest quite a bit of time and resources in finding and fixing the issues. With DevOps, if there's a bug or an error at any point in the pipeline, 
it is immediately returned to the concerned party with all the details so it could be rectified right away. This is possible due to automated testing. Last but not the least, great customer experience. With DevOps, customers get their updates quicker and their feedback is incorporated in the planning of the updates. This makes for happy customers. Let's now move on to talk about the key differences between the traditional development models and DevOps. First, traditional models make big releases while DevOps make micro rollouts. Next, traditional models would have skill-centric silos, meaning that there would be isolated teams based on their skills. With DevOps, you have silos that are dedicated to processes, so teams are working towards one single process to make it more efficient, such as development, operations, and so on. Next, in traditional model, the clusters of information would be spread across silos, leading to difficulty in gathering info and gaining meaningful insights. With DevOps, meaningful information is readily available as everybody is connected to each other and so the information is more actionable. Moving on, traditional model uses centralized scheduling that is software and resources are the same for everyone and deployments are only to be made at central location. This one-size-fits-all approach creates a lot of operational overhead and makes more workload for teams. DevOps leans heavily on a decentralized and continuous approach, letting departments make use of their own software and resources for work. And with continuous deployments tools and cloud computing, teams are spread across different geographical locations and yet work effectively. Next, traditional development models had a culture of do not fail. On the other hand, DevOps focuses on fail early as we discussed earlier. Moving on, traditional models would focus on cutting cost and increasing capacity. While DevOps not only focuses on cost and capacity, but also on flow, meaning time taken for software development cycle. Lastly, in traditional IT culture, done usually meant I did my job. On the other hand, in DevOps model, when people say that they're done, it means that they're ready to deploy. I hope now you understand why companies are adopting DevOps and how the new ways differ from the old. I would now like to tell you what companies are saying after implementing DevOps. Companies are reporting improvement in the quality of their software deployments. They also release new software more frequently. They noticed improvement in cooperation and collaboration in their teams. And finally, they reported a higher quality of code production. Now that we have understood the reason why there is such a great demand for DevOps, let's dive into what does a DevOps engineer do. DevOps engineers bridge the gap between the developers and the IT staff and oversee the code releases. They do this by building a development deployment pipeline such that routine tasks that cause bottlenecks are automated. Finally, they also deploy and scale infrastructure. So now it's time to pull back the curtain on the roles and responsibilities of a DevOps engineer. They have to design, develop, and maintain next-gen DevOps processes. These processes include several stages like planning, coding, building packages, testing, releasing, deploying, operating, and monitoring. All the stages that we just saw could be built into a pipeline with the help of CI-CD tools and automation. So obviously they're in charge of designing, developing, and maintaining CI CD infrastructure with DevOps tools. And on top of that, they must make sure that various tools talk to each other using automation, making the jobs of everyone using the pipeline much easier. Another thing that they're responsible for is to work with developers to make sure that solutions are designed with customer user experience, scale, performance, and operability in mind. And lastly, they're also responsible for assisting with DevOps culture adoption, that is training teams on tools. Now that we have a clear picture on what they're supposed to do on a daily basis, let's see what skills are required to fulfill those roles and responsibilities. We'll do that by taking a look at the DevOps job descriptions from three different companies. First up, we have a job posting from Accenture. And so you can take a moment to pause the screen and read through it, but I'm just going to emphasize the main points. They want somebody who can design and implement CI CD pipeline. They should also have knowledge 
and experience in cloud deployment automation. They should know one programming language like Python, Java, Ruby, or Perl. Next, we have a job from Reliance Geo. They're emphasizing on CI-CD tools, Jenkins, Ansible, Terraform, Chef, Puppet, version control systems like Git, GitLab, GitHub, containerization tools like Docker, Kubernetes, cloud services, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure. They should have a knowledge of one scripting language like Python or Shell. They should also know Linux debugging skills. So it's a good idea to learn that operating system and its distros and also the command line interface. They want their applicant to have knowledge of networking and security fundamentals. Last one is from VMware. So they want someone who can set up the CI CD infrastructure using tools like Git, Jenkins, Maven, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Chef, Puppet. They also want the person to know one scripting language such as Python, JavaScript, Shell, Angular. They want the candidate to know the Java programming language. Also cloud systems like AWS, Google Cloud and so on. So to recap, you should know one scripting language, Python or Shell, one programming language, for example, Python or Java, version control system, the most popular one is Git and its workflows, GitLab and GitHub, continuous integration and continuous deployment tools like Jenkins, Maven, containerization tools such as Docker, Kubernetes, configuration management tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Terraform, and finally, cloud infrastructure, the top ones are AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. So it's time to address the elephants in the room. How to become a DevOps engineer? Well, with everything that we have seen, let's build a roadmap. Before we lay out the map, I just want to mention that you can skip any of these steps on your journey of becoming a DevOps engineer if you're familiar with any of these things. Let's get into it. First, if you're starting from scratch, then it's best to learn the computer science fundamentals. Gain some basic knowledge in software and hardware, networking, IT infrastructure and components, IT security. Then learn specific OS and languages like Linux, a scripting language like Shell, and a programming language like Python or Java. Next, learn the DevOps tools like Git, Jenkins, Maven, Selenium, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, Chef, and Terraform. There are free full-length tutorials for most of these tools on Edureka's YouTube channel, so you should go check them out. As you start to get the hang of these tools, move on to the cloud infrastructure. Understanding the basics of cloud computing and how to set up cloud infrastructure on providers such as AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. These cloud providers provide you with a basic version of their service for free, so you can practice there. Finally, using all the skills you've gained, build an entire pipeline. Use this as a project to stand out in a crowd of applicants. That's it! You're now a DevOps engineer, and it's time to get your dream job. If you're the self-learner type, then you should go check out Edureka's YouTube channel we have full-length tutorials on all sorts of technologies, including DevOps. And you can learn the skills that we just talked about on there. You can also check out our website for blogs about anything that ties to the latest technologies. Have a good read. But if you want to save time or need a little more help with learning the DevOps tools, then we have programs for you on our website. I've mentioned some of these on the screen and we'll leave the links down in the description as well. Many of our programs are live online classes so that you can get real-time feedback from instructors. You will also be able to do live labs and make projects to showcase your skills to potential employers. And of course, you'll earn a certificate. Our master's course alumni work for some amazing companies such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Cisco, Dell and so on. So I'm just going to throw some of the courses up on the screen that can help you along the way. Our courses are made by experts and they cater to all levels of learners, be it a beginner, intermediate or advanced learner.
Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything discussed in this video, please let us know by commenting down in the description below. Also, have a good journey. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!